All right, the first thing we need to do is to jack up the vehicle and remove the wheel. So the first thing you should do is make sure you have your emergency brake applied and you should also chalk your rear wheels to prevent the car from moving. Then loosen the lug nuts, jack up the vehicle, support the vehicle on jack stands and then remove the wheel. So I'm gonna do that now. All right, now that the wheel's off, the next thing I have to do is to remove the spindle nut. Now, in order to remove the spindle nut, you're gonna have to have someone press on the brake for you. I don't have anyone available to press on the brake for me, so I just have this pipe pressing on the brake pedal and pressing on the seat here. I don't recommend doing this because you can rip the seat, but I have, you know, a plastic bag here to kind of prevent it from ripping the seat and that's the only option I really have right now. Another thing you can do if you don't have someone to press on the brake for you is you could remove the center cap on your wheel here and you could put the wheel back on, bolt it back on, uh, lower the car and then you could remove the spindle nut that way. All right, before I'm able to, to remove the spindle nut, I'm going to have to unbend the nut here where it's pressed in uh, to prevent it from spinning out. So in order to do that, you should really use uh, a chisel or something like that. But in my case, I'm just going to be using a flathead screwdriver. I don't recommend using a, screw, a flathead screwdriver because you'll probably break it or you know mess it up but this is a cheap one I don't really mind breaking so on some cars you might also have you may have a cotter pin instead of having it uh, bent bent like this so Alright, now that that's off, the next thing I have to do is to unbolt the brake line and then I'll have to unbolt the caliper. For the brake line, there's a 10 millimeter bolt right here on my car. Uh, this one here I believe is a 12 millimeter and there's another, I believe a 12 millimeter back there and then the brake hose will be disconnected. And um, then for the caliper back here, there's two large bolts. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. There's one right here, which I believe is a 17 millimeter on my car. And there's another right up in here. Alright, now that the caliper is unbolted, I can go ahead and set it to the side. The caliper could be unbolted from the brake hose so that you could just take the caliper away from the vehicle and put it, put it aside somewhere, but if you did that, then you'd have to go through the trouble of bleeding the brake system, and that's really not necessary, so the best thing to do... So the best thing to do with this is to put a wire through one of the mounting holes 
and then just hang it up somewhere so that it'll you know be hanging up somewhere and it won't be hanging on the brake hose you don't want to just let it dangle and just hang on the brake hose because it can damage it so for now I'm just gonna go ahead and place it on this cinder block so that way there's no pressure on the brake hose here and it's safe and secure there all right the next thing that needs to be removed is the brake rotor some cars have retaining screws on the brake rotors like mine does and those will be need to be taken out before the brake rotor can be removed on my car these retaining screws use a Phillips head and that means that they can be stripped very easily so if they're in there tight and you're having a and you're having problems getting them out something that might help you is an impact driver like this I used this a little while ago and I was able to break the bolts loose so they'll come out real easily now alright my brake rotor is loose but on but sometimes it'll be stuck to the spindle and if that's the case you should have some hole, some threaded holes in the rotor which you can take a couple of bolts screw them into the holes and once you have them hand tight you just turn each bolt one or two turns then go to the other one one or two turns and do it back and forth on each one until the rotor finally pops loose The next thing you should do is check to see if you have any speed sensors or anything else that may need to be removed. My car doesn't have anything else like that that needs to be taken off. So the next thing I need to do is to get these ball joints loose from the, uh, from the knuckle. Okay, to separate the ball joint from the knuckle, there should first be a cotter pin that will need to be removed. And once the cotter pin's out, the nut can be taken off. And then after that, I can use a ball joint remover to pop it out. So, I'm going to go ahead and remove the cotter pin and the nut now. The next thing you should do is clean up the area where the ball joints at. You should try to remove any grease or dirt or anything that's around there and just clean it up real nice. And then if you're using a ball joint remover removal tool like this, what you're gonna need to do is install a nut onto the end of the uh, onto the end of the, the ball joint bolt here. And you may be able to just take the castle nut and flip it over and screw it on but the best thing to do is probably to just get a a normal hex nut and just thread it on there and you want the nut to be flush with the with the end of the uh, ball joint pin and you also want to make sure that you have a little bit of space between the nut and between uh, the mating surface up here so that when you put the tool on it'll be able to pop it loose. You may also be using a pickle fork. If, you if you're using a pickle fork you don't have to have a nut on there or anything. So, get that flush. Alright, so again if you're using one of these tools the next thing you should do before you use the tool you should grease the threads on the pressure bolt here and uh, you should grease where it pivots on this on this pin here and you should grease around this area and grease here and all that so I'm gonna do that now alright I got my ball joint removal tool greased up so I can go ahead and install it When you're installing it, you want to be careful that you don't mess up the boot. I'm going to be replacing 
uh, this arm here, so uh, it doesn't really matter to me. Okay. You also may need to make an adjustment to your ball joint removal tool uh, because you want basically this bottom arm here and the, the, the top bracket to be parallel to each other. You don't want one side like cocked in or cocked out too much. Lines looks pretty good, so I'm going to go ahead and tighten it. I'm going to be doing that same thing to my other two ball, two ball joints that I have on here. So I just got this one up here left and the one at the bottom. Some cars may not have the upper ball joint. This vehicle has double wishbone suspension so it has a ball joint up at the top and at the bottom. On some vehicles you may just have it to where the strut bolts up to the, um, to the knuckle. Alright, next the uh, axle just has to be pushed out. We have to lift the bottom of the hub out, just push the axle out. You may need to use a hammer, preferably a plastic one, so it won't damage anything. So that's it. There's my knuckle. And that's how you remove a steering knuckle.